feel very excited to uh, oh, oh, oops. to uh, present our work in front of uh, such a crowd of uh, uh, people with uh, such a high IQs. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, Trish Meng. Uh, we're from uh, SUNY Buffalo. And uh, so in the following, we'll discuss about the, uh, our work on tackling the redundancy and sparsity in crowd sensing applications. And this work was uh, collaborated with uh, my colleague Ho Ping Xiao, my advisor uh, Lu Su, and uh, Yun Cheng from uh, a Chinese company called Air Scientific. Okay. So our story starts with uh, the various sensors in our life. So nowadays we have witnessed the ubiquitous adoption. Oh, why it's uh, okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Why it's uh, okay. sorry about this. The ubiquitous ad adoption of uh, uh, mobile, mobile sensing devices, uh, all kinds of uh, like uh, smartphones, smart uh, watches, smart glasses, and together with those integrated uh, sensors or portable sensors as well, right? However, when we're talking about the um, sensors, uh, we can't forget about uh, humans ourselves, because we are the most uh, complicated sensors on the planet, right? And uh, and uh, um, humans, we are always sensing the environment. And uh, also with the help of these uh, smart devices, our sensing abilities are uh, greatly uh, strengthened. And uh, we have now we have better eyes, we have better ears, we have a uh, better nose, and uh, we can also share our observations you know, across, the, across the whole world uh, through the technology of network. So this is called the crowd sensing in our work and uh, where each participant, with or without the help of those great sensors, uh, they act as a probe to the uh, physical world. So in the realm of uh, crowd sensing, um, there are many tasks that, we, uh, that can be performed. For example, uh, a crowd, a crowd vi wisdom, smart transportation, healthcare, environment monitoring, urban computing, localization, and uh, et cetera. However, there are some serious challenges that are facing us in those crowd sensing applications. And we'll illustrate with the following example. Let's say we wanted to conduct some uh, cross-sensing uh, cross tasks in this uh, shown area. And uh, without uh, loss of generality, let's further divide the area into uh, several grades. Then here, each grade represents an entity that we, we wanted to sense. Let's say, for example, if we wanted to sense the air quality of this, uh, of, of this um, area, then the, uh, that means an entity in this work. So the final goal here is to acquire the knowledge uh, for every entity that we uh, wanted to sense, right? Okay, so in the perfect world for crowd sensing, um, we need the participants to perform the uh, sensing task on every entities, right? But the problem here is very obvious that uh, people in crowd sensing applications, they're mostly volunteers, right? And uh, um, they're not anything like, uh, uh, they're not anything like uh, robots or soldiers. So let's come back to the reality. And the people shows on a place out of their own will. Right? So some places may be more popular than others, and some places may not receive any observations at all. So then we can clearly identify the challenges that we're uh, facing here. Firstly, let's take a look at those areas with uh, red circles. And uh, so instead of uh, there's only uh, one participant in one entity, now we have multiple users who are observing the same entities. Right? So in this paper, we call it the redundancy challenge. And then, uh, how about those these, loca uh, these locations with uh, uh, question marks here? It seems that there's no user's observations that uh, uh, towards these uh, entities, right? So then how to, define, uh, how to derive the knowledge uh, for these entities is the other challenge that we wanted to tackle here. It's called the sparsity. All right. So as we can see that these two challenges, they're, they're so general that uh, these uh, can appear uh, on any real world uh, cross-sensing applications. 
And in the following part, we'll investigate these two tendencies in more depth. Okay, now first, let's talk about the redundancy. Now, let's uh, zoom in and uh, put our attention on only one of the entities. And let's give them, uh, okay, here, we have uh, uh, three participants on this entity. And uh, let's give them some grid sensors or some grid devices that can help them. And uh, here, before I uh, go on, I wanted to clarify one concept. Is that when we talk, when we use the term uh, redundancy here, we only mean that uh, um, there are multiple users or multiple participants observing the same entity, right? But it does not mean that uh, the, those participants' of observations, they should be exactly the same. And uh, actually, in, in many real-world scenarios, um, their observations could be quite different, which will be uh, ex explained in the, in the later. And uh, let's take uh, the air quality sensing as, a, as an example here as, uh, also as well. So one of the uh, participants tell us that uh, the air quality uh, here, the reading is, um, is 90, and uh, maybe others tell you different stories. Okay. So the challenges or the problems associated the uh, redundancy here are, are, uh, are twofolded. First, we have multiple users observing the same entity. And the second, the users of observations, they're really uh, different because individual users are uh, unreliable by themselves. There are several reasons uh, to explain, and uh, maybe it's because of the poor sensor quality, inc incomplete view, uh, environment noise, lack of sensor calibration, or maybe you know, out of concern of privacy, people may want to in, uh, deceive their, uh, their, their reading, right? So the redundancy challenge here is actually how to aggregate the, obs of the, of the uh, ob observations from multiple sensors. And the uh, good thing is that researchers have developed a set of uh, uh, methods to deal with this kind of uh, challenge, and they're called the truth discovery. Since the uh, principles of truth discovery is very important in the, pre in the proposed work, so uh, in this slide, I will uh, give a little bit more in uh, introduction. And so in, the, uh, uh, in this method, the input are the conflicting information about uh, the same set of entities from multiple different users or sensors. And the goal is to discover the trustworthy information for each of the, uh, uh, the entities. However, the challenge here is that when we wanted to aggregate the, the observations, um, it's better to think to take into account users' ability, uh, the users' reliabilities. And uh, uh, some users may be more reliable than the others, right? So this is a very important uh, information that we, want, we wanted to integrate. However, the reliability information is usually unknown beforehand. So. Now, here comes the uh, two very important uh, principles for truth discovery. The first is that is a sensor or a user is more reliable if it provides many pieces of true information. And on the contrary, a piece of information is likely to be true if it's provided by many, many reliable um, sensors. Okay? All right. Then let's take a look at uh, uh, the sparsity problem. Now we have these locations without any users' uh, of users' observations. How can we uh, how to address this challenge? The, the most simple one is that we can exploit the, the similarity information between entities. Let's say uh, if it's a, a geographical distance, right? If it's a, a neighbor of uh, on, on the on the uh, geographical scale, then we can think that the, if there. Then we can think of the, they're, they're similar if their uh, their distances are, are are close, right? And uh, then let's take the air quality sensing as an example. First, we can estimate those locations or those entities with users' observations by means of like uh, a simple average, or we can use more complicated methods like uh, the truth discovery method we talked about. Okay, and in the second, we can use some kind of interpolation-ish methods to um, to fill in those or to estimate those locations, those, those entities with, uh, without any users' observations. Okay, and uh, so. At this point, we can think of a straightforward approach to solve both of these uh, challenges. We can do it in two steps. In the first step, we can um, 
I use uh, uh, truth discovery methods um, to um, estimate those locations or those entities with users' observations. And in the, in the second step, we can use interpolation uh, uh, method to estimate those locations with, without users' observations. Okay. But uh, the problem with this uh, straightforward method is that uh, it uh, regards the redundancy and the sparsity challenges separately. Okay, and let's take a look at these challenges in another perspective. Then we'll discuss the proposed uh, framework that uh, in this work. Um, here we have a user observation matrix, and in this matrix, we uh, each entry represents a user's observation towards uh, an entity. So as you can see here, users they provide observations for different sets of uh, uh, um, entities, and uh, fortunately. The entity three here it receives uh, no observations at all, so it's not popular at all. And uh, then, if we take a look at uh, uh, the matrix for each user, their observations are are sparse, considering we have uh, uh, we have all the entities that right. So basically, each user only provides observations for a subset of the entities and. Uh, of course, it's, uh, his uh, uh, observation is uh, sparse. And uh, for each en entity here in, the use, in the, this user observation matrix, we can see that, that there are multiple users provide uh, uh, their observations to all the same entity. Right? So this is the uh, challenge, that, the re re redundancy challenge that we discussed before. So now these are the two ch challenges, um, just as we discussed before. And, uh, so in this work, we aim to deal with these two challenges in, uh, in, in a joint framework. And by this means, we expect to, um, to have a better estimation on all the entities, with or without user's observations. OK, now let's uh, move on to the, the framework. Um, the proposed uh, redundancy and the sparsity tackling framework, uh, the inputs are observations for a bunch of entities from, um, um, by a bunch of users. Like in this uh, example on this map, we have a bunch of uh, red dots representing the uh, entities that we, want, we wanted to sense. Okay. And we also have several users that uh, they can uh, perform the sensing task. And each of them will provide observations towards uh, a part of some of the entities. Okay. And also, the, uh, the similarity information among entities is uh, also the input of our um, framework. Because uh, like we discussed before, the, uh, the entity similarity information is, is very important when we uh, wanted to deal with the sparsity challenge. Okay. So the final output of this framework is uh, uh, the true values for each of those entities, for all the entities that we uh, discussed which means all the red dots here on this uh, example. Okay, um, then in order to solve these two challenges in the, like we discussed in the joint way, we propose the following um, uh, joint uh, optimization problem, uh, which has uh, three components. There's one matrix factorization uh, component, and there are two regularizations um, on entity similarity, and also on uh, virtual users, which I will be uh, discussing in detail in the next slides, okay. The first uh, component is the matrix factorization, and uh, I, I think uh, you may well, may, you may be well uh, acknowledged with this method that uh, it is widely adopted to infer missing entities, or no, missing uh, values for uh, uh, matrix with uh, missing data. And uh, this method has been applied in many different uh, um, applications, for example, recommendation systems, right? It's the most uh, widely used uh, area. And the basic ideas behind the matrix factorization is that they wanted to approximate the uh, original uh, matrix with the mul multiplication of uh, two lower ranked matrices. And here we have an example, let's say the X matrix here represents the uh, observation uh, with the, the user observation matrix that we discussed uh, uh, previously. And it, it has two dimensions, the users and the entities. Now, uh, what matrix factorization wanted to do is to use uh, 
two low ranked matrices U and V um, to um, approximate the X. And here, the dimension um, on KK was called the, the latent dimension. And the, uh, for a better understanding here in this work, we call it the virtual user. Um, uh, specifically speaking, that uh, we can regard the matrix U as a mapping from the uh, real users to virtual users, and then regard the matrix V as uh, uh, virtual users' observations. Okay, and uh, then we adopt the traditional formulation for matrix factorization here, um, like uh, uh, like show like it's shown here. And the X represents the observation matrix, and uh, uh, the H is. Uh, is a matrix that has the same dimension with X, and it, it uh, just uh, represents the non-missing ent uh, entity in indicator. Right? And uh, as you can see in this formulation, we try to minimize the, um, the difference between the observation matrix and the multiplication of U and V. And by the way, the last term is used to regularize the value of a matrix U and V. It's the regularization. And uh, okay, in order to further um, regularize the formal the, the, the former optimization problem. We also incorporate the entity similarity here. Okay. The intuition is that uh, a correlation uh, the correlated entities are we say similar uh, similar entities should have similar values. So we introduce this term, and this term tells us that uh, uh, okay then the a the a the a j j prime here represents the similarity degree of uh, uh, of two entities, and the v j here represents the observations on anti v j. So what this term tells us that uh, uh, if two entities they're more similar, which is to say the the a j j prime is higher or larger, then the observations for these two entities should be similar as well. Okay, and we can further transform this regularization term into matrix uh, form, which will be. Uh, uh, used uh, in the in the later. All right, and uh, in order to further regularize the open city problem, we adopt uh, uh, a regularization on virtual users because uh, uh, the virtual users' observations there are um, they serve as a, a compression of the original uh, the original data, and they are not equally important with respect to their ability of recovering the observation matrix X. So we borrow the idea from uh, truth discovery. And we have the following uh, uh, formulation. The double K here uh, means the, the reliability or the weight of virtual users. And uh, the VJK means the observations by, um, by virtual user K towards the uh, entity J. And the V, uh, the, the, the v star here means the uh, observation, aggregated, uh, observation aggregation. So this term forces that uh, if a user has a, has a higher weight, has a higher uh, W value, then its observations should uh, comply with the aggregated one, and uh, vice versa. Okay, and we can also um, transform it into uh, the matrix form. And uh, if we put all these uh, uh, together, we derive the following formulation. And uh, the first part is the matrix factorization. The second part is the regularizations on entity, ent uh, entity similarity. And the last one is regularization on the virtual users. And we also have a, con uh, a constraint function which uh, uh, prevents the, the re reliability degree W from going to a negative infinity. Okay. So then we have the formulation. Uh, in order to solve it, we use the block only de descent method uh, to iteratively solve uh, um, each set of the uh, um, variables. As you can see here, we have one, uh, uh, four sets of variables. And the procedure is uh, as the following. We just uh, update one set of the variables where, well, uh, fixing other sets of variables. And the, the, the derivative uh, can be found in the, in the paper until the criteria, um, uh, okay, until the convergence criteria is met. Okay. And we done some uh, uh, analysis, theoretical analysis on, the, on this algorithm and the first uh, uh, when we are talking about the uh, complexity, it, we can say that uh, the, algorithm, the algorithm is uh, linear with respect to the number of users and number of uh, uh, entities, which are the M and N here. And uh, although we have a K square in this, uh, in this complexity, but uh, 
uh, the k usually is a very small number, so doesn't affect the uh, complexity very much. And uh, we can also prove that the um, proposed method is uh, theoretically guaranteed to converge. Okay. Um, then after we have uh, get uh, completed the observation matrix, uh, we can pro uh, uh, run some uh, post process of uh, truth discovery to derive uh, the uh, uh, mm, the values for each of the entities. Then let's move on to the experiments. We have uh, uh, the first baseline is that we it can uh, is the most naive way. We can first perform the uh, the mean on those uh, non-missing entities, then perform interpolation to derive the entities without the user's observations. And the second baseline is that uh, we can first perform the truth discovery like we discussed before, and then we can uh, use interpolation again. And uh, uh, it, this method is to tackling the redundancy and the uh, sparsity challenge separately, like, like, uh, like we talked about uh, earlier. And the last baseline is similar to the proposed method. The only difference is that uh, it doesn't consider virtual users, uh, 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 virtual users' reliability here. So the last baseline is designed to show how the regularization, the regularization term on virtual users can affect the estimation accuracy. Okay, and uh, the performance was measured by uh, mean absolute error and the root square errors. All right. So the first experiment was conducted on air quality sensing system at uh, Tsinghua University of China. And uh, in this system, uh, we used to monitor the particulate matter with diameter less than uh, 2.5 micron, which is well known as the PM 2.5 value of the air quality. And uh, we use a portable air quality sensing device called uh, Mini AQM, which is designed and manufactured by the Air Scientific uh, Corporation. In this experiment, we have 18 participants who equipped it with this uh, uh, portable device. And uh, the ground truth is collected with the thermal, as you can observe from the uh, left on the, on the image. This uh, this uh, uh, device is accurate, but it's not portable. So, yeah, we use it as a, use it to collect the ground juices. And uh, we conduct the sensing task in four areas of, uh, uh, of, of Tsinghua University, and those red dots represent the locations that we have those participants to perform the sensing task. And uh, speaking of the uh, performance when varying the sparsity levels here, we vary the sparsity from uh, um, 72% to 98%. And as, as you can observe that the, propo the proposed method performs better than um, uh, the baselines on different sparsity levels. Okay, and in the second experiment, we also, uh, we also conduct uh, on air quality sensing, but this time we use another outdoor version of the sensing device called the Air Atlas. And uh, they have over 100 devices, this kind of the devices deployed it uh, deployed over a whole Haidian, di di uh, Haidian district uh, in Beijing. And uh, they provide the PM 2.5 readings uh, consistently. And they're mounted on some places. Okay. And uh, although in this uh, experiment we don't have uh, real users, so we, so we um, treat these readings as ground truth and we generate um, users by adding different levels of noises. And uh, in this uh, experiment when varying the number of entities. Here we vary the number of entities uh, uh, from 20 to 98. And as you can see, the proposed method performs uh, fairly good compared with all the other baselines. And uh, yeah, we did another experiment on simulated data uh, such that we can have a full control over the, uh, the, the data. For example, the sparsity level, the number of entities, and the number of users. Right? And uh, in this experiment, we simulate a crowd sensing scenario with uh, 10 areas and let the, the entities within the same area be similar with each other. And the ground truths for areas are set as different and users are generated. Okay. Um, now, okay. Um, when we're wearing the sparsity, now these, these images from left to right, uh, it's uh, wearing the sparsity from 79% uh, to 97%. The dark blue 
um, bars are the proposed method and uh, since these are the errors and you can see the proposed method has the lowest error such that the performance is better than um, others. And uh, then when we talk about the number of entities, we also vary it from uh, 40 to 100. And the proposed method is, is better. And then we vary the number of users from uh, 30 to 180 as well. And uh, also the, uh, the, 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 the digits are pretty good. Okay, in conclusion, um, in this work we propose to tackle the redundancy and the sparsity challenges in uh, for cross-sensing applications in the joint way. And uh, we formulate an uh, optimization problem which captures both the uh, key patterns of user-contributed data and uh, entity similarities. Um, in order to solve it, we propose an effective solution uh, in an uh, iterative way and the convergence is theoretically guaranteed. And uh, at last, we wanted to emphasize that uh, the proposed framework is uh, it's general and flexible and it is suitable for a broad spectrum of uh, application domains. So thank you guys. Uh, we have a brief uh, set of time for questions. Hi, uh, Laman Ahmed, Intel Labs. Um, I was just wondering about the time aspect. So the time complexity? Yeah. No, I mean, in oh. terms of like, if, if you're looking not necessarily, I mean, would you just map time to entities? Yeah, right. So different, the, you can say that uh, if an entity at, uh, at uh, the same location and uh, it varies in different times, then we treat it as different entities. So you can, you know, uh, put that in the, in the framework. Hello, I'm uh, this is Xiang Xiang from Tsinghua University, and, and I have oh, very oh, good to see you here. <laughs> uh, first one is that uh, you use the matrix of factor factorization, mm -hmm. and you know, in fact, this is a, a, sum a summation that uh, the matrix have a low rank structure. Right. And in the real application, I think the this assumption may change the, uh, according to your your sensing. Uh, or uh, which, which thing you are sensing. For mm -hmm. example, if you are sensing air quality or if you are sensing something others, uh, the assumption may change accordingly. And, that, that's uh, the question? Uh, yes, uh, I mean that uh, mm. if, if this is, uh, whether this is the uh, best choice. I think in this, uh, um, in, in, in this uh, uh, formulation, the lower dimension here means the number of uh, you can understand it as the virtual, not the, the number of virtual users. So the number of virtual users uh, here, you can uh, think of it as the, uh, you know, the users with similar uh, errors. Yes. So then, uh, in real application, I believe that uh, this might happen that uh, users, some of the users, they may have similar error error mm -hmm. degrees. So I think this 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 may fit the real problems um, pretty good. Okay. Next question is that uh, you use a method of regularization. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have three parameters to be controlled. Yeah. So how do you select the parameters in practice? Oh, threats. No, you mean? Hold on. You mean uh, I mean uh, uh, the the parameters of alpha, beta, and gamma. Oh, these are these should be selected uh, with some validation data set, I guess. So in because for different uh, applications, they should select it. You know. Uh, from uh, domain knowledge, uh, so or some ex ex uh, experiments. So speaking, uh, which kind of domain knowledge in your research? In this, uh, uh, in our experiments, we 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 do it uh, on air quality sensing. So you know, and and, it, and it also uh, different. Consider what devices you use or what you know. Uh, so it's very different, right? You have to tune it uh, as res with, with, with respect to different uh, um, applications. That, that's all the time we have questions. Okay. Oh. So, so uh, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>